Hi everybody, welcome to my kitchen. This is Cooking Italian with Joe. I'm Joe, and I'm really excited to have you here today. I wanted to uh, share with you uh, an awesome dish. I actually made it uh, about a month and a half ago. Uh, and we're gonna make risotto today. Risotto is a, a dish, it's a traditional in Italy, uh, specifically in Northern Italy. And for some reason, a lot of people get nervous about risotto. Uh, they think it's really difficult or something you need to stand behind the pan nonstop and so forth. But it's actually a lot of fun. Today, we're going to make a real simple risotto, um, and we're going to complicate it a little bit. So we're going to make risotto with butternut squash and mushrooms. And, oh my God, does that sound awesome? Because I'm, I'm hungry to think about that. That's awesome. So I, I laid everything out. I got a little bit of a jump just to save us some time. But we're going to start off with a couple of butternut squash. Uh, and we're going to roast it. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really easy. I'm going to do the other one here in a second. But what I want to share with you is um, uh, we're going to make a little extra because some of the extra butternut squash, I'm going to make butternut squash soup. So awesome on that. Okay. Well, we're going to get some mushrooms. You can use different forms of mushrooms. These are a cremini mushroom. They're great. Uh, they're, so they're just small little mushrooms that will uh, that'll cook down really well. Um, the best risotto is made with an arborio rice. And yeah, that's right, that's my last name, Borio, but I get no uh, accolades from that whatsoever or any uh, royalties. But our Borio rice is uh, specific to the northern region of Italy, and I'll tell you why that rice is the ideal rice to use. What risotto is, is it's going to be a cream sauce, so a creamy sauce or a creamy rice, and it gives up starch. The cream of it, if you will, is from the starch within the rice. So I'm going to talk to you about toasting it a little bit when we get going and why you need to do certain things. and. And there's a certain strategy and recipe to it. But that rice is specific to a very high starch content. And therefore, it's, uh, it's beautiful to use uh, for a risotto. You can use other varieties of rice, but this is ideally the right rice to use or the correct rice to use. And again, it's found in the northern region of Italy. The other great thing uh, you'll find when you research a little bit about risotto is, is it's such a standard dish in Italy that in uh, many of the northern areas, it uh, stands in for pasta, so they won't even use uh, pastas in a lot of regions. They'll just use the risotto, which so it's and risotto is great. It's it's phenomenal. So we've got rice. Uh, we're going to need a stock. Now we're having a friend of ours over for dinner tonight, uh, and he's vegan. So what he wants is obviously animal free. So we're going to use a vegetable stock. You can certainly use a chicken stock. You can use a fish stock if you're making uh, risotto with uh, obviously with fish. Uh, so we're going to use a vegetable stock. Uh, we want to get that heated and, and get that really hot when you start heating up the rice so that uh, you don't stop the process of cooking the rice. Uh, we've got uh, two heads of uh, butternut squash, which we talked about. We talked about mushrooms. You're going to need some butter. You're going to need some olive oil. You're, you're going to need some cheese. You're going to need the music, the fine music of Frank Sinatra and gang, a little Pellegrino water uh, to uh, take care of the thirst as you're going along here. So I, as I said, I jumped ahead on this one here. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna jump on this other one, and uh, just to prepare the butternut squash for uh, um, the oven, what we have here is uh, parchment paper. We're gonna put in. We're gonna preheat the oven anywhere from 375 to 425. Uh, I'm gonna keep it a little bit lower because I want to I want to really uh, make sure this is cooked uh, very thoroughly. So so that being said, what we want to start with is uh, obviously peeling the butternut. So I did one. I'm gonna jump on the other one, and. Uh, you can see that's a very good peeler. See how good it works? It's just really <laughs> cutting it good. So there we go. All right. So you're going to hit this. So we're going to peel the squash. And then what we're going to do is, and I'll, sh I'll show you along here as we go, but we're going to cube it. We're going to cover it with olive oil, salt, and pepper. And then we're going to put it on a, a parchment paper, and we're going to roast it. And then you're just going to cube it. And again, see, man, it's amazing how dense this is, isn't it? It's so dense. So, and then I've got another pan here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cube up the squash, right? Throw it in there. And what I want to do is I'm going to coat it with... Uh, olive oil, salt, and pepper, and I want to make sure that it's all evenly covered, evenly distributed, right? Always goes well and stuff. So what we're going to do whoop, is 
cover it with some olive oil, all right? And, and now I'm gonna cover it with some salt and some pepper. Okay, now that we got everything covered, awesome. Doesn't that look beautiful? Smells good. I know everybody always tells me I smell, I smell stuff, but I just love it. It's so much part of your taste. You just drizzle all that olive oil on there. Oh, love it. And then what we're gonna do is just, we're gonna cover it, you know, try to evenly space it. Oh, there's a little guy that got away right there, so we're gonna, we're gonna have a good luck putting it in there. Okay. Now the parchment paper, what that's gonna do is that is going to prevent any of the sugars. And that's really what's happening. You know, this stuff's full of sugars. And I, I missed the spot, so I'm gonna cut that off right there. Even though I could do it after. That stuff bothers me. It'll bother me knowing it's in there cooking and something's not right. So I'm gonna put it in my little container. So I got salt and pepper on there already. I got olive oil on there. And just get it all, you know, evenly spaced as best you can. And then the oven's already preheated, so I've got my oven going, right? And then this baby's gonna go in there and all of this beautiful squash. And what we're doing is, is we're clearly roasting it. By roasting it, we're gonna cook it at a high temperature and it cooks the sugar at a higher temp. That's why something roast, I'm, I think I'm salivating so much, I'm enjoying. So what it's gonna do is the sugar's in there. If you ever take sugar in a, in a, a, a water, if you will, on a stove, and you, and you heat it up hot, it'll get brown, right? It, it, it uh, almost, you can burn it, essentially. But it, it gives it a roasted feel. So that's what's happening in here. And essentially, the sugars and any food, when you roast something, it actually starts to all just come up short of burn. It gives it that roasted flavor. It deepens the flavor, enriches the flavor. That's what's so great about this. So we're gonna roast the butternut squash, and then when we mix it in the risotto, it gives it a deeper depth, if you will, the flavor. Oh, it's awesome. So we got the oven preheated, as I said. So, and I'm gonna put this near the bottom. This is an electric oven, so it's gonna give me a little bit more heat from the bottom. Look at that, that's beautiful. Now that's gonna go in there for a minimum, a minimum of an hour. Um, so an hour, hour and a half. So I don't, you don't want it done just so you can stick a fork in and pull it out and have it soft. You want the outside to almost start to brown, not burn, you want it to brown a little. So that, therefore, you know it's a little deeper. So sometimes when you roast something, you'll put it up at a higher temp, but if, it, if it's smaller, but these are thicker. So I want to keep the temperature, if you will, down just a touch. So that 350, 375, and then what'll happen is maybe right near the end, I'll crank it a little bit, but that's it, okay? All right, guys, we're back on the risotto. I'm very excited about what's gonna happen right now. We made roasted butternut squash, okay? So that's ready to come out of the oven. I'm gonna pop that in there. Then I went over a few ingredients before and I had put some of the ingredients behind me and I forgot to go over with them. So, um, so I apologize about that. So I just wanna go over that again. We got mushrooms, okay? And onions, very important part of, uh, of the risotto because we're gonna mix that in with some garlic. Butter, which we're gonna put in near the latter stage uh, when we cook our risotto. You gotta have some white wine. I cannot believe I didn't talk about that, but that was actually in my refrigerator. We're gonna use a, a vegetable stock and then we got the arborio rice. So we've got all that going, it's awesome, it's all ready to go, and we're gonna be real organized here in a moment, but I wanna bring out that uh, butternut squash, right? So we're gonna pull that out of here. And what you're gonna see, oh yeah, whoop, there goes my towel, which is awesome, that's exactly what I meant to happen. Look at that. Do you see how I told you earlier how it starts to caramelize? And when we roast, it starts to cook those sugars. So the, when you see things like that, they get brown, it's actually the sugar or if you will, technically, the carbon in the sugar, it gets really brown. So let me move some of my ingredients over here. We're gonna set that off to the side, okay? And that is, oh my God, that smells so good. Unbelievable. Um, I mean, the kitchen, right now I gotta tell you, the kitchen in here smells absolutely phenomenal. So now what we've got is we've got butternut squash and we gotta puree it and then we want to put it into the pan to get the risotto going. So this is cooling for a second, and I need to take that, put it in there, in my food processor. Now you don't have to use a food processor. You can use a, um, a, a blender. You can use a hand blender. You know, you can use any of these. But what I find is that the food processor works phenomenal. You know, you see how well that worked, how it didn't stick? Okay, it stuck a little bit. <laughs> All right, just a little bit. But, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna 
See, and I liked it. You, you, don't worry about some of those browns. If you got some of that brown stuff in there, totally good. Even if it's, you know, almost black. I mean, if it's burned, then that one right there might have gone just a little bit beyond what I would consider perfect. So, so if you got any burn in there, you know, then don't put anything in there that's burned, okay? But if it's brown, brown is what we want. Brown is good. Because that's that caramelized sugar. That's that, I mean, I can smell it. It smells roasted. And that's really, it gives you the depth, the flavor. That's what you want. So you're going to pop this in. Sometimes you'll need to, uh, I don't know if we're going to need to do that here, but sometimes you're going to need to put a little bit of liquid in. Yeah, see, that's a little too brown. That one's a little too brown. Let me cut that puppy away right there. There you go. See, that's easy. Look how easy that is. Just cut that off. Don't get it stuck in there. Get away from me now. That one's good. That one's good. You know, it's almost on the verge of black, but it's not. Okay, that one's a little dark too. See how that? See, eh, that's questionable. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a little less in there. You know, maybe a half of a cup. Everybody wants to know exactly what measurement it is. And... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit more, just a little bit more. And what you, you just need that extra liquid. Now this is what we're going to be using in the risotto anyways, right? So it's not going to. Uh, there it goes. It's not going to dilute it at all. It's not going to take away any of the flavor. Now I already put, remember, I put some salt and uh, pepper and olive oil on it. So it's already got a little bit of a flavor. Okay, so we've been hammering this to see. And that's exactly, if you can get right in there real quick, what you want to see is, see how nice and smooth that is? So it's totally pureed. It's just smooth puree. So no chunks. All the brown golden bits that well, came off the butternut squash, they're incorporated now. Oh my god. I can I mean you could just eat it just like this. This is absolutely perfect. Oh man. Awesome. Okay. So remember, I made a little bit extra. Probably in most risottos, you're only going to need to make one butternut squash. It, I say that, depending on how much you're making. I'm making a double batch or double portion. So that being said, I wanted to save some extra. And then any extra stock I have, I'm going to put that in there. And I'm not going to do that in this video, but put that in there. And then I can put a little dollop of uh, cream cheese or regatta cheese or something like that. Then you mix that in. Oh my God, that's a perfect butternut squash. Real healthy, all organic. Real good for it to eat. All right, so we're done with this, right? So I'm gonna bring this off to the side, and I'm just gonna let that cool. Now we gotta get going on the risotto, okay? So I've got this beautiful pan. One of the things I wanna to talk to you about, just quickly on risotto, is one, you're gonna to wanna, to, and if you wanna come over here, that's fine. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to, to wanna to get a pan that's flat on the bottom. So you'll notice traditional risotto pans are flat. You wanna increase the surface, because what you're basically doing is you're incorporating a hot liquid into the rice. As you cook the rice, you're letting it uh, absorb part of cooking rice, where you're going to absorb the moisture. And then you want a spoon that's going to be flat. So they make spoons specifically. This one's got rounded edges, so you can get it in the edge and so forth. So there's a, I, I think there's a, it's thought that you need to stand there and, um, and not leave the risotto. That's not accurate at all. So you can certainly let it let it go. You don't want to leave it in the sense of go to another room, but you don't have to stand right next to it and so forth. So, so we need to get going on the risotto. So what we want to do is we want to put our base in there. So we're going to put olive oil. I always throw a little butter in there and then you're going to throw butter in the end when you put cheese in there. But you're going to throw olive oil, you're going to put onions and garlic and you're going to let that cook and, and, uh, and basically uh, get translucent, caramelized. As that gets heated, we're going to add our white wine. The alcohol, the wine is going to cook off. Now that's a nice hot liquid, and then you want to add your um, um, risotto, your rice. And the rice will uh, um, actually toast. Now what's, our, what's the gig on that? Why do you need to do that? You want the rice to toast so that it actually cooks the outside of the rice a little bit so that it gives up its sugars or starches slowly. That's, that's essentially why you do it. So it almost like, it's almost like searing a meat. It sears the outside of the rice. You toast the rice. You toast it for a couple minutes. Some people say a minute, 30 seconds, five minutes, what have you. So you don't want to cook the rice so it's black, but you want to heat the outside of the rice. So that's how we're going to do it, okay? So real important, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my olive oil, all right? 
So, and in this case, you know, how much olive oil? We're going to put a little bit more than normal, but I'm making two portions. So I probably got a cup of olive oil in there, all of a cup of olive oil in there. And that's beautiful. That's going to cover the bottom. Then I'm going to put the heat on. Now, again, I want the heat on. I want to warm it, but I don't want to. I don't want to get the oil so hot that I'm going to fry it, right? All right, guys. So I chopped up some onion. Now this is one whole onion. It's one large golden onion. That's what I did. Okay, you don't have to use a golden onion, but golden onions a little sweeter. It's got a little bit more flavor. White onion's got a little bit more punch to it. So I always cut up the onion before we uh, record because uh, if not, I'm going to be tearing up. So I'm going to just put the garlic just to save us time. I cut the garlic up, and you'll see. The garlic's thinly sliced or small, right? But it's not, it's not minced or mushed. And again, it's, it's really important to do that because you want to see the garlic, okay? So we've got the garlic going. Here it is. I've got the onion in here. I've got the olive oil. And I've got the oil's very light. So one little thing I always do just to make sure. You see when I put it in there, it's not bubbling or anything? I don't want it to bubble. I, wa I don't want to fry it. You're not frying it, okay? So... You're gonna hear it cook, but you don't want it to be bubbling and frying and all that other stuff, okay? If it is, don't even panic. Don't even get nervous. Just slide it over or take it off the heat fully. It'll cool down very quickly. And that is beautiful. So that's our base. That's our base for our uh, risotto. There's a skin in there, so I'm just getting that out of there. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a mushroom. Oh, it tastes good. All right. So, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that down even lower. It's beautiful. And, and I want that to cook, okay? And I want to get it so it's translucent. I want to get it so it's nice and translucent. Again, when you cook something, especially vegetable, you break down the fiber within the vegetable. It works really well. All right, so now we need some mushrooms. So again, this is a hardier version. Kind of think of like old school Italy, right? Old Italy. So I've got some mushrooms here. Criminy mushrooms or baby criminy mushrooms, right? So I'm going to chop these puppies up, right? And then that's a little too big for me anyways, but something like half of that is good. So now typically you wouldn't put, depending on what you're cooking, um, a lot of the vegetable or, you know, let's say chicken or something. So it's going to be cooking a long time. But when it, in regards to mushroom, it's a hearty, essentially fungus is what it is, but it's a... It's a hearty fungi, so that's going to stay in there, uh, and it's going to hold up to the heat very well. There's nothing bad that's going to happen to it, if you will, and it's not going to get overcooked. So we're going to put that, I'm going to incorporate that right in with everything else, okay? So this is going, and this has been going for what, a minute? And uh, well, sometimes, I, like, I, like I missed a garlic right there, it's a little bit larger. So hey, pop it down, don't even worry about it. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm mixing that in, right? And that's going to cook down. And again, what you're doing is you're breaking down the fiber and you're extracting that flavor from the from the uh, from the food. So we need to open up some wine because we're going to be using wine here in a few minutes. And this is a white wine. This is a real simple wine. I think this bottle is about a $350 bottle of wine. So it's out of my private cellar collection. I'm just kidding. I think it's like seven bucks I'll put up with the wine. And we're just kind of nice and easy. There you go. You know what's sad is they're getting rid of corks. And I know the I've read the science on it, you know, when you do the um, when you do the caps that seals the wine better and it's better in every way and it lasts longer. But you know, it sucks. I like taking the cork out. Who wants to just unscrew the top of a bottle of wine? Kind of ruins the whole thing, you know what I mean? If you're traditionally, and that smells good. It's a nice little, it's a white. Now I didn't let this, I didn't let this uh, get real cold like I normally would because I took it out of the uh, refrigerator. That's why I forgot to show it to you earlier. But um, um, because I don't want to put something really cold in something that's hot because it'll stop the cooking process. So. It's a Pinot Grigio, it's, it's great, it's fine. It's got a nice little flavor to it. So now this is cooking, right? So this is going. All right guys, we are back. Now comes the fun part. We've got the pan going, as I said before. We got olive oil, we got mushrooms, we've got garlic. 
Again, we're not frying it, we're warming it up, we're getting it translucent. it has been going for a little bit of while. Now we have to toast the rice. It's a very important process of making risotto. So when we look at the risotto, this is a two pound. I'm gonna make half of this. So I'm gonna make a pound, which is around two cups and change. So let me open this up. This is really neat. You'll find that a good risotto is vacuum, uh, I'm sorry, the rice is gonna be vacuum packed. Remember, one of the worst enemies to rice is moisture. So if there's moisture, and I normally wouldn't do it like this, but I'm doing it this way so you can see what I'm doing. But it's really cool. Isn't that neat how then you get the air in there and that? There you go. And you'll notice this, this rice is a little smaller. I don't know how tight you can get on that. But it's a little smaller. It's got like a white inside. It's translucent on the edges. It's really neat. Okay? So we're going to put about half of that in there. All right? So... You figure we're going to put a pound. Now we're toasting it. So you see all the my onions, my garlic, my mushrooms. Everything's starting to get a little soft, right? So this is toasting the rice. Very important part. Now some people, I don't mean to make it difficult for you, but in this case if you go by weight, a lot of Europeans will go by weight. They won't go by volume because weight is a much more accurate. So that's half of that package, okay? doesn't really matter to be exact because you're not going to put the amount of stock, exact amount of stock in. So it doesn't really matter. So now we've got this hot and we want to get the hot oil around all of the rice. And this is toasting it in the oil, okay? You want to get all the rice covered with hot oil. Alright, now because I've got so much going on in here, and I put quite a bit of rice, you'll see the rice, even though the rice is room temperature, it still kind of slows down the process of cooking, and that's not always good. So what we want to do is just let it set over the heat. One of the things I've learned over the years, too, is don't let little pieces of rice get away from you, because if they get up on the side, they don't cook. And then when you're done with the dish, You've got this piece of rice in there, it's like a piece of rock, and everything else is nice and soft. So what I like to do is spread it around nice and even, same thing on my spoon, clean that spoon, and we're going to let that set now, and again, I've heard people say, you know, geez, you only do it for a minute or something like that, but there's so much rice in here, and it stops that cooking process, so get it moving again, I can hear the rice, or the oil starting to get hot again, which is great. I can remember when I was a kid, um, standing next to my grandmother at her house uh, when she made uh, risotto. One thing I, I find amazing with uh, the difference between America and Italy is that most kitchens in Italy are really small. They're really small. So we cook um, very large, if you will, out of uh, large kitchens. And the Italians cook a large meal, but they actually cook it out of a small... I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit now. Um, because now I'm watching it, right? So my grandmother had this little stove. I remember my grandfather, Toscano, used to make uh, pasta fagioli, used to make uh, lentil soup, used to make homemade pasta. And he had this little stove. It was like this big. Little stove, he had a little counter, he had a wooden stool, because when he got older, you know, he had trouble standing there for a while. He got uh, wounded in uh, World War II. He took some shrapnel in his leg, so... Um, he had one of those, I feel bad too, my other uncle had the same thing. Um, they had those metal and leather braces. Now you see all the great technology that they had, but he had a drop foot because he got wounded in the war. So he'd stand there, I'd stand there next to him, and, and he'd have his t-shirt on, gold cross with a little Italian horn, and uh, he'd stand there tell me stories. So, great guy. All right, so now this is toasted. We got this going for a few minutes. Now we want to put some wine in there. Now the wine we're going to put in there will probably be about a cup to a cup and a half, okay? How do you know that? Well, because you do it for a long time and you get to know it. So if you got to measure. So that's a, that's a cup. I'm going to do about a half a cup right there. Oh, that's beautiful. And now you're going to see it bubble. Now what's going to happen is the wine is going to give up its alcohol. The stuff that everybody likes, that doesn't make you feel good in the morning, right? So, oh my God, that smells so good. You can smell the sweetness, even though that's more of a dry white wine for the most part. 
once you put it in there, it gives up the alcohol and it gives up some of its sugars. Oh my God, it smells good. So I got the mushrooms in there, the rice has been toasted, and now this is our first stage. What it's gonna, what's going to happen here is the rice is going to absorb, the rice is going to absorb the wine. So it's picking up the flavor of the wine. Now look, see how it was watery a, a minute ago, right? But now look, now it's not so watery anymore, right? It's perfect, perfect, perfect. That is just easy. So I want you guys to know how easy, see, and it starts to get dry. What you'll notice when you start to drag it, see when I put my spoon across, it starts to drag, it literally starts to drag, see that? So that's when you know, hey, it's time to put some more liquid in there, okay? So now what I'm going to do, and now we're going, so we're going to be rocking here for a little while, right? I'm going to grab my ladle, right? I got my stock going here, and this stock is hot. I don't want to shut the heat off because I want to keep the stock hot, but I don't need to keep it going that hot, okay? So I'm going to grab my ladle, right? And then I'm just going to draw it across. And what do we got here? We're just going to stir it in. So you can see it. See how it already dried out? So it'll start to get watery again. You start to push that across. Remember what I said about those strays? Just get all that rice off the side. Okay, so what we've got here, can you come on real tight? See how now it's starting to dry up again? See how it's starting to labor? It's almost dry on the bottom, right? So, again, it doesn't, you don't have to let it go that much. I do, because then I know, hey, listen, it's absorbed all that. So I'm going to put a couple in now, because it's moving quick. Okay, so that's hot. I got hot stock, and I got hot hot rice, okay? So just get all that swooshing around. We got some great Sinatra playing. Risotto cooks better with Frank. I had Dino playing. I had Nat King Cole. You know, and again, it's Sunday here, and it's just, to walk into this kitchen right now, would my camera person agree with me? Does it smell great in here or mm -hmm. what, right? So what a great way to welcome your family or friends or loved ones. They walk in your house with the smell of all that. I don't even have the fan on. I don't. Even, I hate turning the fan on because I don't want to waste all those that smell and that aroma. So this is cooking really well. All right, here we go. Look at this. Come on right in here. Look at that. See how it's starting to drag when I pull it across? And like I said, if you give this water or water stock, it'll keep it'll keep taking the stock. So you want to just taste it. So Oh my God. Unbelievable. All right, so that's great. Now you'll notice I haven't put any salt in there, okay? And that was on purpose because we're gonna put butter in there. So I wanna put some pepper and my, my butter is salted. So, there she goes. Give me a sec here, let me get some air. I just refilled my pepper grinder with so let me mix that in, okay? And then I'm turning the heat way down, okay? Now that's that's essentially done. We've got a couple things. One, we want to put some butter in there. So I'm going to put about three quarters of a stick of butter right in there, all right? And that's room temp. And see how creamy, even without the butter, see how creamy it is? It's all the starch. You know when you cook pasta and you see the uh, water start to get kind of milky, that's the starch coming from the pasta. So same thing here, you're going to get that starch. See now this is going to start to get a little creamier. You see it? And the butter is hot. In fact, I'm going to put that last piece in there. I said three quarters, but it's dragging a little. So I usually use three quarters or a stick, depending. So now I'm going to wait till that fully melts. Okay. Wait, it's gonna get it's gonna get crazy in a minute. So hold on. So what do we've got? We got onions, we've got garlic, we've got olive oil, white wine, we've got vegetable stock. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Oh 
Okay, see how it's starting to pull again? If you guys can see that? And see how creamy it is? Oh, that's just beautiful. That's all creamy. Now, we've got a couple of things. One, we've got cheese that we got to get in there. There's a little grind in the cheese. We're going to get that out. we got cheese. And then we've got the, uh, the squash. So what I'm going to do is put the cheese in. How much cheese do I have in there? I have about a half of a cup. Okay, so we're going to put some squash in there. Now, I have two huge pieces of butternut, right? So I'm going to put about a third of the squash that I, I made in there, okay? I've got stock going over in the corner, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix that right in. So I put the butter in first, which will cream it up a little bit more. See how it's getting a little stringy now, too, from the cheese? Now, if you need salt, now's the time to add it, but don't add it before, because what happens a lot of times, remember, I put salt on the, on the um, butternut, and then I got salt in the butter, and I got salt in the cheese. So what I've done, and I've made that mistake, is you should start putting this and this and this, and you're like, man, you know what's a little salty? And look at that, isn't that beautiful with the mushroom? So let me grab a spoon real quick, make sure we're done here. Oh my God, can you smell that? 